Welcome back to At Home with the Dogginses. Hey everyone, how's it going? So, we recently watched the two big uh, theme park related documentaries that came out. Uh, one of them being Defunct Land's Halix documentary, which we didn't realize we're in. Yeah, that was wild. <laughs> we're in the background of a shot uh, towards the end during some interviews that were conducted after a podcast the ride live show <laughs> and and you can just see us in the background of a shot and well you we so you you're more noticeable than i am because you're having your maboogie shirt in the back yes i'm wearing my pistol shrimps maboogie shirt and i believe we talked to the director uh of I, the documentary that night i think so I, I think we did also talk to them at the other live show we went to with nicholson i think so i think i think we talked to him at both live shows so uh so that was wild. Um, yeah. But the other big theme park documentary re- recently was uh, the Class Action Park on HBO Max. Yes! The Action Park documentary narrated by John Hodgman and featuring <laughs> Chris Gethard and Allison Becker and other people who... Were on Parks and Rec. <laughs> nobody else saw who was on Parks and Rec. Other people <laughs> who like actually worked at the park and stuff. But I don't care about those people. I care about John Hodgman and... Chris Gethard and Allison Becker. It was nice to see my former drinking buddy, uh, like Rick Gerard. Your former drinking buddy, John Jimin Hodgman. Exactly. I wish I had a cool story for it. It just so happened that Hodgman and I had a bar we both liked to go to in Brooklyn. Yeah. That's the story. You crossed paths from time to time. Yeah. So Action Park obviously is infamous. Yes. But it got me thinking about water parks in general. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, my water park stories, because... Water parks in general do have an intrinsic level of danger that regular theme parks don't necessarily have. I love them. Because water parks, by and large, the rides are kind of self-operated. Yeah. Um, I I love any kind of place where death is a possibility. Well, I tell you, I don't. But I used to love water parks. Yeah. I, I don't I don't love the possibility of death at all because I'm scared of everything. Yeah. Whereas I'm fine with it. I'm currently working at an active mall right now. So, you know, I've just made my peace with the fact that... Yeah, but you hate doing that. Yeah, it's true. But... So, <laughs> so I, I feel like that doesn't substantiate your story. But I'm just saying is that I'm kind of used to you know, being in uh, fun situations that could put my life on the line. <laughs> Uh, the point is, when I was a kid, I loved water parks. The only one I've been to recently was we did the evening uh, at VidCon last year. We did the um, the Great Wolf Lodge evening, which was fun, yeah. but also brief. It was fun, but I felt like I was the oldest person there. <laughs> <laughs> we were up there, to be sure. Mm-hmm. And we did. we ended up only doing like one water slide, but we spent a lot of time in the wave pool in Lazy River. Yeah. Um, Because we've hit that part of our 30s now. Yes. But uh, (laughs) as a kid, I loved water parks. Um, I don't cover water parks in videos, uh, partially because in Florida, I had the cheap annual passes that didn't include water parks. And partially because most non-Disney water parks don't really have enough theming for me to riff on (laughs) in a video or to latch on to. Like most water parks don't really have distinct identities mm-hmm. from each other they're just the water park that's here and also partially because i didn't have a camera i really felt comfortable taking into water parks anyway no of course <laughs> uh at least when i lived in florida but as a kid i thought water slides were so much fun and there were a few water parks that were key to my development one of them was the water park in the edmonton mall which uh When we visited my grandmother uh, when she moved to Edmonton, we always did a day at the mall. I'd spend the morning going down water slides. I'd spend the afternoon in the ice skating rink. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in the evening, we'd hit up like the one little roller coaster. Nice, nice. They had some other stuff. There there was a dark ride at the Edmonton Mall. The Edmonton Mall sounds like a fantastic place to hang out for a couple hours. The funny thing is I've never been to the Mall of America. I've only been to Canada's version. (laughs) Though I now desperately want to go to American Dream in uh, Jersey, like the next time I fly back east. (laughs) You know, it's funny. I've heard about American Dream since it was in development, and I've driven past it countless times on the Jersey (laughs) Turnpike, but I never pieced together that that's what that weird building on the Turnpike was. But the funny thing about the mall is every time I drove past it, it would remind me of the old 
T two three D show building here in Hollywood. Oh yeah. Oh okay. Like it it had similar like weird like blue checker mm -hmm. like boxy design. Yeah yeah. L like a like a pixelated IKEA sort of thing. <laughs> And I never realized that that weird, ugly building that made me think of Terminator 2 3D was the infamous mall with the DreamWorks Park mm -hmm. that was never, ever, ever going to open until it did. And now it's closed again, but now it's yeah. probably open again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there were a couple of other uh, water parks I've hit over the years. Uh, in 2000 or so, I uh, spent a day doing the water slides in Wildwood, New Jersey, when we were visiting friends there Very uh, nice. for one summer. You know, just one of the piers had water slides, and I'm sure they were festering with disease, but... Well, it is New Jersey. Of course, it's festering with disease. And it's Wildwood, which is... Uh, Truly festering with disease. <laughs> yes. My main memory from that week is that... On day one, I got like the worst sunburn I ever got in my life, and I just <laughs> lived with that the rest of the week. I, I love how we have office experiences on different sides of the coast where I've never gotten a sunburn on the East Coast, but the second I came to but California. Your, th your third day in California, you got a terrible sunburn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I believe I mentioned on the podcast before that on my high school senior trip to Florida, we did a day at Wet and Wild, RIP, which... Uh, <laughs> By all accounts, was kind of an infamous water park. Later, when I lived in Orlando, I heard from some of the other locals, like, yeah, it just feels like any time in the news there's, like, a stabbing or whatever. It's, like, outside wet and wild. <laughs> but uh, So, obviously, wet and wild is the action park of Florida, so. <laughs> <yeah>. Evidently, <laughs> except in my memory, there was nothing particularly dangerous about the slides themselves. It was just <laughs> like any old water. Like, yeah. nothing about it made an impression on me. It was just mm -hmm. water slides and wave pools, all the normal. Yeah all the normal things. I will get to uh, the most formative water parks for me in a moment. But first, uh, what were your formative water parks? I really have one big one that like lays like like a big part of my my psyche, my spiritual like whatever. <laughs> and that's Dorney Park in uh, Pennsylvania. Ah, of course. Yeah. I went to a camp in Pennsylvania many for many summers. And our big like middle of the summer camp trip that we did was to Dorney every year. Mm -hmm. And that big funnel slide, you know the one, the big funnel slide, it haunts my memory just because... I know not yeah. the not, I know not the specific Dorney Park one, but I know the type of yes, which you speak. It was gigantic and it freaked me out and I would have to go on it with like my friends Kelsey and Leah and just like roll down on this thing like every year. It was terrifying, but I loved every minute of it. And also that just meant that it was the only time of year that I could get Dippin' Dots was also at Dony Park as Of well. course. <laughs> theme parks are where you get Dippin' Dots. Yeah. But like local theme parks, not, yeah. not like big chain theme <laughs> yeah, parks. Exactly. I also, the one time I went to Lake Compounds as a guest, I've been to Lake Compounds ex exactly twice. Once was for a job interview, but the one time I went... <laughs> Actually, as a theme park guest, was on a sixth grade field trip. Uh, Lake Compounds was the local amusement park in Connecticut, which part of it was a water park. It had water slides and I believe a wave pool, but I believe also an actual lake. Uh. As I recall, one of the water slides was like shaped like a lighthouse, mm. and that was what you got for theming. Yeah. <laughs> I just remember that Lake Compounds field trip. They gave us a bunch of, like, to justify it being a field trip. They gave us a bunch of bullshit homework, like, like worksheets of like, like how do roller coasters demonstrate the laws of thermodynamics? <laughs> that kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, we need to write this trip off. So that's sixth grade for you. I also recall my mom at one point tried to convince us that renting a paddle boat at the tidal basin because it was constituted as a water park. <laughs> Because I think she was hoping that we it would lower our expectations enough that she would never have to take us to one. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Were there any other big water parks for you besides Dorney or any other slides you recall? <laughs> that was really the big one. I always was um, interested since I've moved out here to go check out Raging Waters, especially after it's a uh, mention in that one episode of A Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Yes, Raging Waters, which was... Uh used for the uh, fictional water park Waterloo in the first Bill and Ted movie. Yeah. And uh, and also Soak City in Knots, obviously. Yeah, I should go to Soak City sometime since I 
have all the knots comps mm -hmm. i might as yeah. well use them on soak city oh you know what i just remember recalled there was it was not a traditional like water park per se but there was like one of those big family complex centers which was like multiple pools and it had some slides in there oh sure yeah so th we had a membership to one because my parents needed us to burn off energy because when you have four kids with adhd it's a tiring existence to have basically of course. of course so my parents invested in like a family membership to one of these like to cheverly which was like a big it had like pools for adults pools for kids and it had some slides and like uh some sort of a version of the tarzan water swing thing but like it was much smaller and safer obviously and that was also a way for us to kind of get a some sort of water park theme park type of itch scratch without actually going anywhere sure we also had at least one family friend out here in California before we lived here who had like a pool with a water slide in their backyard. Oh, that's luxury right there. It is. It is like a water slide and a diving board. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa, living it up, man. You people must be really rich. <laughs> to afford the insurance on that damn man. <laughs> but my most formative water park experiences were all in Colorado. Uh, now, I've, as I've mentioned on the podcast before, every other summer our parents would have the big work conference in Colorado and there'd be childcare and youth group experiences for the kids of all the families mm -hmm. who work for the organization. And these experiences would include these field trips and at least one day every summer was a field trip to a water park. Ah. Now, in elementary school, it was this dinky little water park whose name I don't remember, which felt, e even at the time when you're a kid and everything feels bigger, like, mm -hmm. even at that time, it felt basically like the size of Adventure City. <laughs> Makes sense, yeah. You know, like, l like a... <laughs> it's a little guy. <laughs> it's like a mini golf course sized yeah. water park. As I remember... I've been to mini golf places bigger than Adventure City, though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're... <laughs> You're not wrong. We still haven't actually been inside Adventure City. We've yeah. just driven around it. <laughs> As I recall, this little water park had exactly three slides, one wave pool, one arcade and pizza stand, which I recall mostly as being the first place I ever drank Surge. That's a very vivid, like, so, you know, yeah. That, <laughs> that puts this in a time and place. Yeah. This park might have had a lazy river. I don't remember for sure. But mm -hmm. if it did, it was a pretty small lazy river. But in middle and high school, we went to a real water park in Colorado, which is called Waterworld. Uh, no connection to the Costner movie or the stunt show based on the Costner movie. <laughs> I was movie. about to say, does, is there a Costner acting as a lifeguard welfare? But I believe this water park predates the Costner movie. Oh, fuck, man. That's wild. It's also just... <laughs> an easy name for a water park. Like, water <laughs> world. world. It, sure, it's alliterative. Um, it makes more sense than Wally World. <laughs> yeah. I believe our roommates know of Water World uh, because they are from the Colorado area Indeed. as well. But yeah, unlike the one we went to in elementary school, this water park was big. Mm -hmm. So big that it had, like, this gondola system to take you to the other end of the park. That's amazing. L like, it, it basically had a skyway. But... Yes! But uh, it, it was like sh uh, a shut-in, you know, cage skyway. It, it, it's like more like the current Skyliner yeah. at Disney World than the old Disney Park skyways. And uh, yeah, the gondola took you down to the other end that had one of those huge water funhouse jungle gym deals. You know, the kind where you climb all over it and a big bucket fills with water and dumps on you. Mm -hmm. And the park also had a huge wave pool. And I don't even know how many slides the park had, mm -hmm. but it was... A good number, including two themed water rides. Ooh. We only ever found one of the themed rides. Of course. The one we could never find was called something like Lost River of Pharaohs. Okay. Uh, this was the Egypt themed ride. Sure. It absolutely existed. We saw a picture of the ride on the sort of brochure part of the map. But we could never find the entrance to the ride on the actual map. Mm -hmm. And, like, we had been to this park so many times, and we felt like we had explored every walkable corner of the park. Like, mm -hmm. we felt like our foot traffic, we covered every, all of it, but we never found this Egypt ride that we Wild. were told existed. And, like, we asked all our friends, did you find this Egypt ride? Where is this Egypt yeah. ride? It's, it was hiding from <laughs> us. 
it knew we craved theming and it was just <laughs> hiding from us. Theming is life. Theming is love, everybody. <laughs> Uh, but the other themed ride was very easy to find because there was a big billboard pointing towards it in the park by the wave pool. Uh, and this ride was called Voyage to the Center of the Earth. Okay. Not Journey to the Center of the Earth, the Jules Verne book, and not Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, the Irwin Allen movie and TV series. Okay. It was just halfway between the two names. Sure. Voyage to the Center of the Earth. But we just called it the Dinosaur Ride. Nice. This was basically a low-budget Jurassic Park The Ride. Mm -hmm. And I say low-budget because it was still technically a themed water slide. Mm -hmm. Not a, quote, ride with a ride mechanism. Mm -hmm. Which meant you had to wait in line at the bottom of the hill. Like, you waited in the canopy in the queue while they mm -hmm. played on TV screens footage from old, like, stop-motion dinosaur B-movies. Uh-huh. Which, you know, super fun for me. Of course, of course. But then once you got to the end of the line, it was, you know, where the ride let out where the water slide let out and the group would get out the exit get out of their raft then the lifeguard would hand you you know the big That's six person clover, inner yeah. tube <laughs> would hand you the inner tube then you would have to carry the inner tube <laughs> up the hill <laughs> to the entrance of the ride best scam of the water parks is you doing all the labor <laughs> like <laughs> it, it was it was tedious but this ride was worth it mm -hmm. i have been told that they have since added some sort of conveyor belt system but i have not been back to this park since mm -hmm. so i could not tell you if that's accurate or not but yeah no like ski lift or anything you just had to carry this big you know the biggest size mm -hmm. inner tube they had because it fits you and your friends and you had to carry this heavy thing all the way up the hill yeah but then you get to the top of the slide and the slide goes into a cave, and the cave and slide were filled with dinosaur animatronics. That's awesome. Cheap dinosaur animatronics. Naturally. But any animatronic is welcome in a local park. Mm -hmm. I remember towards the end of the ride, there's a big T-Rex, like, poking out over a volcano. My memory of this is that in the first year we went, the T-Rex actually, like, stood up and leaned over the volcano and, like, growled. Rawr. But then when Rawr. we came back later, it was just sort of still in place poking its head over the top not really moving just its eyes moving and it's Rawr. sort of growling <laughs> that's my memory is that it just went downhill Rawr. which not surprising <laughs> my other memory is like the first time we went it seeming so you know it, it's dark in there yeah and the first time we went it felt completely immersive like it was cheap obviously we could tell it was low budget of course but we felt completely in it then every other time we went, we noticed, oh, there's, like, lifeguards sitting right on the edge. Yeah. <laughs> like, everywhere you go. And rightly so, because it's, it's you like, know, a ride with no seatbelts in the dark. Like, rightfully so, there's lifeguards everywhere. But... Uh, you would think that'd be a natural thing to do, but Action Park had other ideas No, that. exactly, exactly. We have learned from experience that uh, not all parks take this very simple precaution. <laughs> <laughs> take the bare minimum of safety. <laughs> Um, so then, yeah, I, my other big memory is that all the warning signs, uh, really hyped up, like, strobe light effects, which basically amounts to, at the very end of the ride, there was, like, a brief lightning flash. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, animatronic dinosaurs, when you're a kid, you eat that shit up. And now, as an adult, I eat that shit up. Oh, baby. <laughs> So it, uh, if we're ever in the Denver area and we have time to go to Waterworld, the first thing I do is I'm going to the dinosaur ride. Second thing I do is I'm not resting until I find this fucking Egypt ride. <laughs> I know it's in there somewhere. <laughs> Obviously, the dinosaur ride was our favorite ride. It was mm -hmm. it was the closest this water park had to like a Pirates of the Caribbean or something. Mm hmm. Unless the Egypt ride was somehow better, but we never yeah. found it, so who knows? Mm. Every year we were like, this year we're going to find it, but we never did. <laughs> this so... year I'm finally going to ride Haunted Mansion. I'm so excited. Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe the Egypt ride was the mansion to the Dinosaur Rides Pirates. <laughs> we'll find out someday. Yeah. Or not, because who knows if this water park will survive being closed for the pandemic. <laughs> exactly. But while our favorite ride in this park was the Dinosaur Ride... Our favorite story to tell from this park happened on the Lazy River. Ooh. Now, this was the summer of 2003. <laughs> you may recall from the Relitigating Old Crap series, that was the summer we filmed the short Escape. Okay. 
you remember Escape. Andrew Schumann riding a bike around an apartment complex. That's supposed oh, to be yes. a prison I, security complex. I do remember this, yes. So you recall that that was the summer that Eric's friend Josh was joining us for the first part of the summer. Yes. So Eric's friend Josh joined us at Waterworld. By this point in the day, we had done the dinosaur ride, we had done the funhouse thing, and we had given up on finding the Egypt ride. So we were like, let's do the Lazy River for a while. Because, you know, you want to relax. Oh, of course. It was five of us. Mm -hmm. Me, Nick, Eric, Josh, Andrew. Mm -hmm. Basically the whole cast and crew of Escape. Yeah, yeah. Because we were just the people who were hanging out that summer. (laughs) Now, we did not realize how crowded the Lazy River would be. So our plans to all hang out together as friends on the Lazy River were foiled because only one or two of us could enter the river at a time. So basically, Nick and Eric got into the river and we watched them float away, never to be seen again. (laughs) Then I believe Andrew got in by himself and floated away all on his own. And finally, Josh and I managed to get in, and it's just the two of us floating on down, surrounded by strangers. And it's pleasant. You know, it's a lazy river, but we're like, this would be much more fun if we were actually with our friend group. Mm -hmm. So eventually, Josh is like, you know what? I'm master of my own destiny. So he stands up in the middle of his inner tube in the lazy river and just starts walking forward. (laughs) He's like, come on, I'm going to catch up with the rest of the gang. He just plows forward, shoving his way through with his inner tube. And long story short... This causes a traffic jam where every single inner tube in the river is somehow wedged together. It's just stuck completely motionless. So much for mastering his own destiny. (laughs) Exactly. I'm not sure how this thing got so over capacity, but the mere act of walking forward caused the entire Lazy River infrastructure (laughs) to just collapse. So now Josh and I are not with the rest of our friends, and we're not moving at all. I don't remember how we were eventually able to get out. (laughs) Like, I have no memory of this problem being solved. <laughs> just one minute you're in, next minute you're out. Like yeah. Sometimes I wonder if I'm still there and I've just been dreaming everything in the 17 years since. Oh, God. <laughs> but we did later find out what the rest of the gang was up to during this. Eric and Nick had been floating along, and when Josh caused the traffic jam, Eric found himself stuck in the middle of what he described as a group of hick middle school cheerleaders. <laughs> Sure. He's he's just like slightly <laughs> separated from Nick and he's just surrounded by these like <laughs> like this 13-year-old cheerleading squad on some sort of some sort of group outing <laughs> who are clearly from somewhere in the south mm-hmm. and uh this was at a time where Eric's uh hair was at its shaggiest uh mm-hmm. much to the contention of his mother. <laughs> uh and uh, these girls were all about Eric's hair. Uh-huh. And he's just like, okay, okay. Like, it's not that he's never been the center of attention before, but he's just like, okay, one, these are children. Because, mm-hmm. you know, we were going to our junior year of high school. So, mm-hmm. you know, when at that age, middle school is actual child. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Nick is just watching the side in awe. He's like, wait, I'm actually age appropriate to be... <laughs> <laughs> it's like... Wait, did, 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 I'm, I'm just going into my freshman year. I, I could actually, like, it's it's not weird to be objectified by middle schoolers at my age. Just yodeling. Hi, my name is Nick. I also have hair. <laughs> Do you like spaced? <laughs> I don't think we would have heard of spaced yet, yet in 2003 because it was still a recent show (laughs) what are your feelings on pride and prejudice (laughs) but the exchange i remember eric telling me about is uh they complimented his hair and he mentioned his mom didn't like it and one of the young girls said well you just tell your mom that we think it's sexy (laughs) (laughs) and and he's like okay Thanks, and, uh... He proceeded to then cut it off later that night. <laughs> he basically said, well, that that's prompt to shave the head, but, uh... <laughs> but meanwhile, poor Andrew was all by himself trying desperately to keep himself entertained. So he started making a game of sort of bobbing in and out of his inner tube, ducking below the water and popping back up in his tube. <laughs> 
So he's just, you know, sort of bobbing down. He's, you know, in the middle of his tube, pops below the water, bounces back up, back in his tube. Just <laughs> doing anything to keep himself entertained. At one point while he was under the water, the traffic jam happened without him noticing. <laughs> so he was still moving forward, and he popped up in somebody else's tube. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he popped up like someone was lying on the tube and suddenly he's in the middle looking up at this person he's <laughs> in the middle of and he immediately ducks out and just like tries to get out of the way and hopes they don't notice <laughs> here i am stuck in the middle of your tube <laughs> <laughs> he eventually finds his way back to his own tube but he was like okay that, that was uh <laughs> That that was actually his second embarrassing experience uh, at this water park. The first being when he was going down one of the water slides, but uh, for some reason he had sort of slowed down in the slide compared to how fast you were supposed to go. Mm -hmm. And this large woman was apparently barreling down behind him. <laughs> so he ends up exiting the slide in this woman's lap. <laughs> So basically, <laughs> somehow Andrew was cursed to not have personal space in Waterworld. <laughs> Two separate instances. I don't remember if they were the same year. Like, I don't remember if that one was... I just hope that when that happened, he looked up and was like, are you my mother? <laughs> But yeah, I don't remember if that earlier incident was uh, the time before or if it was the same year. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> he basically just could not catch a break when it came to personal space in Waterworld. <laughs> so that's the most formative water park in my existence. That's amazing. <laughs> I just like that's amazing. And yeah, it's been a while since I've really been to a water park. Uh, had a real part of it is because again most of my theme park trips in general are uh video quests and i am not bringing a good camera into a water park but yeah of course uh although i did bring the rebel into great wolf lodge but mm -hmm. that was vidcon everybody was bringing their cameras no of course and it's like in my case it's sort of uh I want to go to a, like a water park, but it always feels like it's one of those things I want to do with like a group of people, not just like by myself or just with you. Yeah, that's the other thing is water park feels more like a group activity than even like I can go to Disneyland or Knott's by myself, spend the entire day there all by myself and not have a problem. Mm -hmm. Something about water parks make them only really fun as a social experience. Mm -hmm. And I think part of that is like, again, like so many of the water park experiences are designed for, you know, lazy rivers are designed to be with your friends. Wave, yeah. wave pools are designed to be with your friends. Yeah. It's like, we have a friend who lives in Austin. There's like a pretty famous lazy river in Austin that she keeps on saying that like, would be such a fun one to have like us come down to hang out with her and we would all get like, you know, frozen Cokes and just chill out on this thing for a couple of hours. I think that sounds great and we should yeah, do it sometime. Absolutely. It's like... Now, on the other hand, in the year of our Lord 2020, I <laughs> I don't actually know when I'll feel yeah. safe in a water park again. Yeah. No, it's it, this actually reminds me. Do you remember when we were driving through Pennsylvania and we saw that uh, water park for sale? Yes, we were on some back road <laughs> and there was a water park there that was for sale. Yeah, <laughs> it was like it had a lazy river. It had some like some slides and stuff like that. And it looked like it was pretty dinky. Like it was. Uh, yeah. It it was on the side. Like it was at the bottom of a cliff side, and it looked like it was just a couple of slides. It it looked like action park but mm -hmm. but uh lower budget yeah e even cheaper it looked like the water slides weren't designed dangerously it just looks like they were probably rotted away <laughs> oh absolutely yeah but we were like should we look up what the asking price is because yeah. <laughs> cause we can't afford it but should we just see what a ballpark it let like should we see what kind of walking around money we need to have to purchase a water park? No, absolutely. I'm also sure it was partially for sale because, again, it was off a back road and 
to get to it was insane. We also drove past Dorney that same day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just was like, ah! as we drove past that thing. But that was off, you know, a main highway, mm-hmm. and this was not. Yeah, that was like when we got lost in Allentown, right? Yeah, we uh, got, th- this was sometime after we did the Turkey Hill experience. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it was a little while after that, and uh, we kind of got rerouted. Well, because we, we were looking for the uh, the Watch and Clock Museum. Yeah, in the same yeah. Because you had a friend who works there, but they were closed that day. Um, but then instead of just getting us back on the highway, the GPS was like, now go over here. And mm-hmm. it's like, w- 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 where are we going? Yeah, which, you know, led to several rounds of uh, uh, obviously a, a screaming scenes from Italian restaurant by Billy Joel while driving through Allentown. <laughs> we just like to sing the wrong song for yeah, every location. Exactly. Now I like the song Allentown. But has Billy Joel ever been trying way harder to be Bruce Springsteen than with that song? I don't think so. I don't think it's possible. Well, it's kind of like with just the way you are. I've never heard someone trying so hard to be Barry Manilow than him. Sure, sure. It's like Billy Joel has enough of his own identity. He doesn't need to be trying this hard to be. Yeah. This is not your place to say this, Billy Joel. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like Billy Joel, just... Just be be the piano man we know you are. Exactly. Anyway, if we ever feel safe at water parks again, I'm sure we'll hit up Soak City eventually. And totally, cause, yeah. Because I also never did Aquatica when I worked at SeaWorld, even though I wanted to, but I just never found a day that I wanted to drive all the way to SeaWorld when I didn't have to go to work. And I didn't want to bring my swimsuit to work to change into afterwards. Naturally. But... The the ads all had like, look, a water slide where you like slide through the dolphin tank. And that looked really cool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that does sound like fun. But uh, never got around to it. And mm-hmm. what you going to do? True, true. I know people have speculated about if uh, Disneyland will ever build a water park instead of building a full third gate. I- I've never personally felt that, but hey. <laughs> A couple of people have speculated just because, like, you can do a water park on a smaller footprint. Mm-hmm. Th- like, a, a satisfying water park doesn't need to take up as much space as a, as a satisfying theme park. But also, Disney used up a great name in Disney Springs, basically. To, yeah. You know, so. <laughs> That's true. That's a better water park name than shopping center <laughs> name. Well, because there are the two water parks in Florida, the three, if you count the defunct one that gave people brain eating parasites. Ooh, hot. <laughs> is that the same one where that kid got eaten by the alligator you might have to narrow down which kid got oh. eaten by which alligator oh at yeah World. That's, that's true uh, uh, that's more rid- um. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to 2020 everybody <laughs> but it's also like they could buy some space across harbor and put a water park there more easily than mm-hmm. building a full third gate well, you know, babe, eventually when Disney inevitably does buy all of Anaheim and turns it into a theme park outright. Including our apartment. Indeed. That's basically when they'll turn all of uh, Anaheim Stadium into like giant water world. Do they own water world or is that a universal property? It's universal, which is why the stunt shows at Universal Studios. Oh, I never thought about that. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, granted... The Simpsons is Disney, and that's at Universal Studios. Yeah, exactly. So. It's, I have to ask now, because like, most of uh, Universal's properties are Disney-owned now, so hey. I mean, there was a hot second where Disney was looking to buy Hasbro, which would have made Transformers a Disney property. Oh, God. <laughs> which is extra funny, considering they designed Transformers specifically to replace Spider-Man if they lost <laughs> the Spider-Man rights to Disney. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> Anyway, I know people don't speculate as much about a Disneyland water park as they do about a third gate because they're less interested in a water park. And also, it's like they have water slides at all the hotels. So mm-hmm. that's really, as far as locals are concerned, that's all they need. But uh, it's interesting because Knott's and Six Flags both have adjoining water parks here. Yeah. Um, but uh, Disney and Universal don't. And they do in Florida, but not in California. Now, Universal, to build a water park, would pretty much just have to, like, shut down some sound stages. Mm -hmm. And uh, honestly, like, I'm sure they've decided it's not worth it to do so. Mm -hmm. But, like, 
Universal needs more to do, so it wouldn't be the worst idea. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I'd prefer they build more, like, immersive themed areas, but, like, mm -hmm. I guess they have a taste of water park with the uh, super silly fun land outside of Minion Mayhem. They Because mm -hmm. they have one of those, again, one of those water fun house jungle gyms, like, Waterworld in Colorado has. And you know um the area that takes the uh, the escalators that take you from both uh, the upper lot to the lower lot really does simulate the uh, way you have to walk up all these slides in exactly. order to go down on them. What if they just put a water slide alongside that so you could just, <laughs> just like... choose to take the slide down <laughs> and then you it, it gets you down a lot faster but you have to wait in a much longer line to do it. <laughs> And then it just splashes you down next to the Jurassic World splash zone. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be amazing. Okay, this is the next armchair Imagineering. is just strategically <laughs> placing water slides throughout Universal Studios. <laughs> I'm not actually going to do that. But I want you to. <laughs> here's the thing. Every fucking thing at Universal Hollywood squirts water at you. Yeah. So this is not that big a stretch there have been multiple times that i've had water squirted at my ear at universal that has been <laughs> incredibly annoying <laughs> and that's why you now have tinnitus exactly what <laughs> that's not true you just have extreme sleep apnea <laughs> it's like regular sleep apnea except just drinking a baja blast on a skateboard <laughs> So someday I'll go to a water park again if I ever feel safe sharing water with strangers. <laughs> so when you're 57. Mm, by that point, I'll be too... My, my bones will be too creaky to enjoy a water slide. <laughs> but a lazy river might be up my alley. Especially if it's got, like, jacuzzi me. jets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and you and me in a lazy river together. Yeah. Sounds like a nice romantic evening. Surrounded by rowdy teenagers. Just like the night we met. <laughs> <laughs> so, listeners, what is your water park experience? Have you been to the Disney water parks? Which I haven't. Tell me all about them, even though I know mostly about them because I've like looked at the maps and done the reading and stuff. But Have you been to Dorney in the last 10 years, which I have not been? Tell me about the all new updates yeah. that happened since there. Have you been to Lake Compounds? Am I making it up that it was shaped like a lighthouse or is that a real thing? Has your parent also tried to convince you that doing a tugboat on a tidal basin is the same as a water park? Comment below. Here's the thing. Doing the tugboat sounds more expensive. <laughs> yeah. But I guess it's over sooner. Yeah. <laughs> Share your water park stories with us. What's your favorite water slide? Do you have one? Did you ever go to Waterworld in Colorado and find this fucking Egypt ride? If so, can you give Dave very specific directions so that he'll know where to go next time? Give me the GPS coordinates. <laughs> like, give me the exact latitude and longitude of the entrance to this Egypt ride. <laughs> Kevin, our roommate, if you are listening, <laughs> I know I could just walk into the next room and ask you this question, but <laughs> I can't monetize the question unless I ask you through here. And you know how badly we need to monetize everything to afford rent on this place. <laughs> that got too personal too fast. <laughs> what if this just becomes like Vlogbrothers, but instead of, you know, Hank and John... Sending messages to each other is just, just us sending messages to our roommates. <laughs> like, I, I don't hate it. I'm just going to say right now, I, I don't, don't hate it. I don't think that's the pivot we're going with on At Home with the Doggins, <laughs> but uh, you never know. Uh, so find out next time. And until then, this has been At Home with the Doggins. Later days, y'all. Later days. <laughs>